Hey, shalom, shalom to all my fellow brothers and sisters out there. It's me again, Damian Power from YeshuaSaysAll.com. Peace be to you in the name of our Father, Yahweh, and our Adon, our Master, the Son of Yahweh, Yeshua HaMashiach. So my fellow brothers and sisters, I have a very uh, another very important message today. Um, it's called Die to Self and Be Obedient Until Death. Now, I pray that everybody watches this through its entirety because it's important. I want people to understand what is going on. Um, but anyway, with that, we know that on um, on this channel that we're here to give the truth and we have to strengthen the body of Messiah to stand. So with that, my fellow brothers and sisters, let's go ahead and get started. Luke chapter 9, verse 24. For whoever wants to save his life shall lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake shall save it. Very important and strong words from our Messiah Yeshua. This message is not to scare anyone, but to strengthen the body of Mashiach, Messiah. And all the lukewarm believers who are on the fence with one foot in the world and one foot with our Messiah Yeshua. There is nothing to fear when we have the Elohim of Israel with us, okay? But don't settle for the comforts and the safety of this world and what they are offering. But stand for our Father Yahweh and follow his son Yeshua, okay, no matter what. And we're going to discuss throughout scripture, okay, who chose to lose their life for the sake of our Father Yahweh and Yeshua versus trying to save their own lives to end up losing their souls in the end. Not all of them died in the process, but many were trying to see how they would stand. So when you have died to self and are living for Yeshua HaMashiach, then you will know that nothing else in this world matters. Okay, and I pray, I pray that this opens up some people's eyes so they say, look, let me stop being lukewarm. I choose you, Yeshua. I live for you, Yeshua, and for your word and to keep your commandments. Romans chapter 6, verse 3 through 4. Or do you not know that as many were as immersed, baptized until Messiah Yeshua were immersed, baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through immersion into death, that as Messiah was raised from the dead by the esteem of the Father, so also we should walk in newness, newness of life. So a lot of people have to understand, like when you were baptized, you were supposed to be born again, okay? You're supposed to be a renewed creature, and you no longer live for yourself, but you live for a Messiah who died and rose again, okay? So you died with him with the expectation to be raised just as he was raised. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15, and he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised. And that's why I put this shirt. Yeshua died for you, not live for him. Okay, that, that this is what our life is all about. Okay. The reward in the end is greater than anything on this earth. Therefore, your minds should not be set on the earthly things, but the spiritual. As Paul said, do not be transformed. Do not be conformed to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We too must be ready to stand no matter what. We know that things are beginning to heat up in this world. Food shortages, the COV cure that they're talking about that will alter your DNA that our father Yahweh has given you at birth. Along with, and it has aborted baby fetuses, mercury, all these other things, right? And to monitor your movements, health records, you won't be able to buy or sell. So without it, you will not be able to work, okay? So you have to understand, my fellow brothers and sisters, that we'll be the outcasts of the world, okay? The ones who do not comply will be deemed as threats to others. So they will hate you and even turn you in. So if you are a lukewarm believer, it's time to stand up and live completely for him. Because when you're living from him, for him, you will trust in him. And nothing in this world will scare you, okay? So it's time to stand up and decide whether you're going to be, be a sold-out disciple of our Messiah Yeshua and trust him in him or fold into the plans of men. Are you ready? Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 through 33. 
Everyone, therefore, who shall confess me before men, I shall confess him before my father who was in the Shamaim, the heavens. But whoever shall deny me before men, him I shall also deny before my father who is in the Shamaim, the heavens. There are many who are asleep and spiritually blinded and trusting in the plans of men and their narratives and mainstream news and not trusting in our father Yahweh and his son Yeshua. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5 through 8. Thus saith Yahweh, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his arm, and whose heart turns away from Yahweh. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and not see when good comes, and shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, a salt land that is not inhabited. But Baruch, blessed is the man who trusts in Yahweh and whose trust is Yahweh. For he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers, which spreads out its roots by the river and does not see when heat comes. His leaf shall be green, and in the year of drought he is not anxious, nor does he cease from yielding fruit. Psalms 33, 13 through 22. Yahweh has looked down from the Shamaim, the heavens. He has seen all the sons of men. He looked from his dwelling place on the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all. He who understands all their works. The king is not saved by the multitude of an army. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. A horse is vain means of safety. Neither does it rescue any by his great power. See, the eye of Yahweh is on those revering him and those waiting for his kindness to deliver their being from death and to keep them alive during scarcity of food. And like I said, they're talking about food shortages in this world. You should not fear. Our being has longed for Yahweh. Our help and our shield is he. For our heart rejoices in him. For we have put our trust in his holy name. Let your kindness, O Yahweh, be upon us. Even as we wait for you. Psalm 37, 18 through 19. Yahweh knows the days of the perfect. And their inheritance is forever. They are not ashamed in a time of evil. And in the days of scarcity of food, they are satisfied. Look at those promises, my fellow brothers and sisters. Psalms 112, uh, verse 5 through 7. Good is a man showing favor in lending. He sustains in right ruling, for he is never shaken. The righteous is remembered forever. He is not afraid of an evil report. His heart is is steadfast, trusting in Yahweh. No matter how evil the report gets on earth, my fellow brothers and sisters, we are not shaken. We are not moved because we trust in our father Yahweh and his son Yeshua. So if you have it, start trusting him. Start doing it today. Okay. Let's look at examples of um, examples of how our hearts should be prepared to stand by looking at other people from scripture. Okay. And what their action was and their trust in our father Yahweh and his son Yeshua. Daniel chapter three, verse four through seven. Then a herald loudly proclaimed to you, it is commanded, O peoples, nations and languages, that as soon as you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the pipes and all kinds of instruments, you shall fall down and do obeisance to the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has put up. Whoever does not fall down and do obeisance is immediately thrown into the midst of the burning furnace of fire. So as soon as the people heard the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, and all kinds of instruments, all the people, nations, and languages fell down and did obeisance to the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar had put up. So there is nothing new under the sun, my fellow brothers and sisters. So where do we see this again? Revelation chapter 13, verse 14 through 15. And he, and he leads astray those dwelling on the earth because of those signs which he was given to do before the beast, saying to those dwelling on the earth to make an image to the beast. Now that right there is a direct reference to what was written in Daniel. They wanted them to worship the, gold, the golden image. And now we see in Revelation that they're, uh, they're going to make an image to the beast. Okay? And... Dwelling on earth to make an image to the beast 
who was wounded by the sword yet lived, and there was given to him to give spirit to the image of the beast, and the image of the beast should both speak and cause to be killed as many as would not worship the image of the beast. So this, this image speaks. The one that Daniel didn't, but as you can see, the same outcome was there. If they didn't bow down and worship that golden image, they were thrown into the furnace of fire. This one, people will be killed for it, okay? Now, our responses should always be just as uh, the responses of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, okay? This is what they said in Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. For if so, our Elah, which is our Elohim, whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning furnace of fire and from your hand, O king, he delivers. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your mighty ones, nor do we do obeisance to your gold image, which you have put up. Look at that trust. Shad, Matt, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fire for not bowing down to the image. And during the end times, those who don't worship the image of the beast will be killed, as I explained. They were protected for trusting in Yahweh. And as we know, Yeshua was in, with them in the fire. He was that fourth member. It was Yeshua HaMashiach. No matter, no matter what, uh, no matter what, I'm saying is hold firm to the end and do not deny him. Do not break his commandment. They trusted in Yahweh whether they were going to be delivered or not. Genesis chapter 39, verse 6 through 14. And he left Joseph's hand all that he had. This is uh, the Potiphar. And he did not know what he had except for the bread that he ate. And Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. And after these events, it came to be that his master's wife lifted up her eyes to Joseph and said, lie with me. But he refused, and he said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not know what is with me in the house, and he has given into my hand all that he has. Not one is greater in this house than I, and he was not withheld whatever from me but you, because you are his wife. And how shall I do this great evil and sin against Elohim? And it came to be, as, as she spoke, to Joseph day by day that he did not listen to her, to lie with her, to be with her. And it came to be on a certain day when Joseph went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the house was inside that she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. So Joseph stayed faithful to Yahweh and his commandments by not committing adultery, even though it landed him in prison. And we know that Joseph was 17 years old, Genesis chapter 37, verse 2, when he was sold into slavery and then thrown into prison. And then uh, he was 30 years old when he went before Pharaoh, Genesis chapter 41, verse 46, which shows that he was in prison for 13 years. But he remained faithful to our father Yahweh and Yahweh blessed him by making him a dad to Pharaoh, a master of his house and a governor to Egypt. OK, he did not uh, trust in the plans of men. He trusted in our father Yahweh to keep his commandments till the end. OK, Peter and John were thrown into jail. Acts chapter four, verse one through four. And as they were speaking to the people, the priest and the captain of the sanctuary and the Sadducees came to them being annoyed because they taught the people and announced the resurrection from the dead in Yeshua. And they arrested them and put them in jail until the next day, for it was already evening. For many of those who had heard the word believed and the number of men became about 5,000. Acts chapter 12, verse 1 through 4. And about that time, Herod the king put forth his hands to do evil to some from the assembly. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword, seeing that it was pleasing to the Yehudim, the Jews, who proceeded further to arrest Peter as well. And they were the days of Matzah, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So when he had seized him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to watch over him, intending to bring him before the people after Passover. So we see, again, the people of Messiah were being persecuted, but they did not let what the men were doing 
dissuade them. Okay, they they stayed faithful, even though they landed in prison and and um and James died. Daniel chapter six verse three through thirteen. Then then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governor, the governors and the viceroys because an excellent spirit was in him and the king planned to appoint him over all of the reign. Then the governors and the viceroys sought to find an occasion against Daniel concerning the reign, but they were unable to find an occasion or corruption because he was steadfast and no negligence or corruption was found in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his Elah, which is Arabic for Elohim. Then the governors and viceroys tumultuously gathered before, before the king. They gathered before the king and said to him, King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the reign and the nobles and viceroys, the counselors and advisors have consulted together to establish a royal decree to make a strong interdict, which is a prohibition, that whoever petitions any mighty one or man for 30 days, except for you, O king, is thrown into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the interdict the prohibition and sign the writing so that it is not to be changed according to the law of the Madites and the Persians, which does not pass away. So King uh, Darius signed the written prohibition and Daniel, when he knew that the writing was signed, went home in his upper room with his windows open towards Jerusalem. He knelt down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his Elah, Elohim, as he had done before. Then these men gathered and found Daniel praying and entreating before his Elah, his Elohim. Then they approached the king and spoke concerning the king's prohibition. Have you not signed a prohibition that every man who petitions any mighty one or man within 30 days except for you, O king, is thrown into the den of lions? The king answered and said, the word is certain concerning the law of the Madites and the Persians, which does not pass away. So when the king found out that it was about Daniel, he was heartbroken over, but he couldn't change the law. But we see that Daniel did not let a law prevent him from praying to Yahweh as he had been doing three times a day previously. Daniel stood up for Elohim despite that threat to be thrown into the lion's den. Do you see where I'm going with this, my fellow brothers and sisters? No matter what this world tells you, do not go against the word of Yahweh to not break his commandments ever, to cling to Yeshua no matter what, no matter how illegal the world wants to say it is. Okay, do not break the Sabbath day commandment, his dietary laws and all of those things. Keep his commandments. Okay, trust in him. Tobiah chapter 1 verse 10 through 11. And when we were carried away captive into Nineveh, all my brothers and those who were of my relatives ate the bread of the Gentiles. But I kept myself from eating because I remembered Elohim with all my heart. And the Most High gave me favor and kindness before Shalmensa saw so that I was attended. So him being faithful, Yahweh blessed, it, blessed him for his obedience. John chapter 15 verse 20. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they shall persecute you too. If they, if they have guarded my word, they would guard yours too. So we have to remember that a servant is not greater than his master. Okay. And Yeshua said that we are called to walk like him. First John chapter two, verse six. So we must be prepared to stand. They persecuted him. They'll do it to us too. Philippians chapter two, verse eight, and having been found in a fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death, even of a stake. So he set the perfect example up for us. That's what that means. When you pick up your execution stake and follow after him, that means that you ought to die to self. That means you ought to die to sin. OK, and not continue to live to self. That means that you are to be led by the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, so that he can lead you into all truth and righteousness through the Torah. 
Okay, that's what picking up your execution stake and following him is all about. Dying to self. Now, I'm going to read to you a perfect exa another good example about dying to self in the book of Maccabees. And I warn you, my fellow brothers and sisters, this is not to scare you, but it's very graphic. But I have to point this out just to show you how obedient and faithful and trustful they are to our Father Yahweh no matter what. That's why I want to read the scriptures, not to scare you. It's to prepare everybody from everything that I've just read thus far. It's to strengthen you to stand no matter what. Second Maccabees chapter 7, verse 1 through 9. And it also came to be that seven brothers with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to eat pig's flesh. So I just wanted to point that out, that people say that they can eat whatever they want because they're saved by the blood of Yeshua. And it's not true. And I have many videos about this. But we can see that Antiochus was trying to get them to eat pig's flesh. Why? Because he knows that it goes against the commandments of our father Yahweh of Leviticus chapter 11. The dietary laws where he says don't eat no pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, any of those unclean things, scallops and all of that. But anyway, and he compelled the king against the law to eat pig's flesh and were tortured with scours, scourges and whips. But one of them that spoke first said, what would, you at, what would you ask or learn from us? We are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our ancestors. I just pointed out the Torah, the commandments, the first five books, and specifically Le uh, Leviticus chapter 11. Then the king becoming enraged com commanded pots and cauldrons to be heated. These promptly being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongue of he that spoke first and to cut off the outer parts of his body with the rest of his brothers and his mother looking on. Now, when he was mutilated in this way over his entire body, he commanded while still alive to be brought to the fire and to be fried in the cauldron. And as the smoke of the cauldron spread widely, they encouraged one another with their mother to die bravely, saying, Yahweh Elohim watches over us and in truth has compassion on us. As Moses spoke his psalm, which is witness, witness to their faces, saying, and he has compassion on his servants. So when the first had died in this manner, they brought the second to make him a mockery. And when they had pulled off the skin from his head with hair, they asked him, will you eat before you are tortured over every part of your body? But he answered in his own language, which is Hebrew, and said, no. Therefore, he also received the next torture in turn as the former had. And when he was at the last gasp, he said, in wrath, you remove us from this present life. But the king of the world shall raise up we who have died for his laws unto everlasting life look at those words we shall be raised up who have we we who have died for his laws unto everlasting life verse 14 through 17 so when he was ready so when he was ready to die he said it is good to be put to death by men to look for expectancy from Elohim to be raised up again by him as for you you shall have no resurrection to life Afterward, they brought the fifth also and mutilated him. Then he looked at the king and said, you have power over men. You are corruptible. You do what you want. Yet you do not think that our nation is forsaken by Elohim. But wait a while, see his great power and how he would distress you and your seed. Verse 20 through 23. But the mother was, was greater above all and worthy of honorable remembrance for when she saw her seven sons slain within the space of one day, she bore it with good courage because of the expectancy that she had in Yahweh. So she also encouraged every one of them in her own language, Hebrew, filling with courageous spirit and stirring up her womanly thoughts with a brave face. And she said to them, I cannot tell you how you came into my womb, but for I neither gave you breath nor life. Nor was it I that formed the members of every one of you, but with, but without doubt, the creator of the world who formed the generation of man and revealed the beginning of all will also give you of his own kindness, breath and life 
again. As you disregard now your own beings for the sake of his laws. Hallelujah. This cruel torture happened to all of this, of this, this mother's seven sons in her presence. And one day, and then she was killed. They chose to obey Yahweh and not break his commandments under any circumstances. And like Yeshua, our Messiah and Savior, Savior they were obedient unto death. But the ultimate message is this. Yeshua overcame the world and sits at the right hand of our father, Yahweh. Okay. And at the name of Yeshua, every knee and tongue shall bow and confess that he is the master. And he says that, that um, he who overcomes will sit on a throne just as he overcame and sat on the father's throne. Those who die for Yeshua in obedience will be raised unto everlasting life. Just as the second son said in Maccabees that I just read. Okay, we ought to look forward to that and store up our treasures in the heavens versus treasures, storing up treasures here on earth. We know that life here is short. Okay, so those who rule or who are think they're in control, they think that they are winning, but in the end they will lose. Just like they thought when they crucified Yeshua, they thought that they won, but they actually lost. He saved them whether they knew it or not. And he said he did it for all of us. So they figured, hey, you know, I can kill the righteous. I can kill the saints and the prophets. And they see them physically gone. But that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean anything in the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm, if you die for Yeshua and don't deny him, you keep his commandments, we believe and know, no, we know that we will be resurrected with him on the last day. So stand with him. Do not break his commandments. Do not break the Sabbath. And like I said, keep his dietary laws, Leviticus chapter 11. Follow all of the Torah. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and the judgment was given to them, and the lives of those who have been beheaded because of the witness they bore to Yahweh and because of the word of Yahweh, and, and who did not worship the beast nor his image and did not receive his mark upon their foreheads or upon their hands. And they lived and reigned with Messiah for 1,000 years. And the rest of the dead did not come to life until a thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Baruch, blessed and holy is the one having part in the first resurrection. The second death possesses no authority over these. But they shall be priests, kohenim of Yahweh and our Messiah, and shall reign with them for 1,000 years. These are the ones who got beheaded for following our father Yahweh and Yeshua. They did not turn to the left or the right. They stayed on that narrow path. And as you can see, their reward, they were resurrected and reigned with them for 1,000 years. And the second death has no power over those. Hallelujah. Those righteous. Psalms chapter 116, verse 15. Precious in the eyes of Yahweh is the death of his saints. His Kodeshim. Precious in the eyes of Yahweh is the death of his saints. Think about that. How deep are your roots, my fellow brothers and sisters? Matthew 13, verse 18 through 21. You then hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the rain and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what is sown in his heart. This is that sown by the wayside and that sown on the rocky places. This is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself because... But it is short-lived. And when pressure and persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. You build your foundation on the rock so that when the, the waters come and the rains beat upon and the floods come, your house still stands because the foundation is Yeshua. He is the rock. And his Torah and, and he himself who is the written word that became living flesh is that rock. But if you are wavering, if you are not keeping his commandments, then when the rains come, it will knock over because you, you never had a foundation. So at persecution for the word, you will stumble. Matthew 24, verse 10. And when many and then many shall stumble and they shall deliver up one another, one another and shall hate one another. OK, examine your roots, my fellow brothers and sisters, to see if your faith is strong as Shad, Mad, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel, Joseph, Peter, James, Paul, Paul, Tobiah, the mother with their seven sons, just to name a few, okay? 
Or can your faith be shaken and you be one of those that Yeshua spoke about in the parable that you will uh, fall and stumble at persecution for the word? Will you fall away? Examine yourself. Be strong, just as everybody that I've named here. Will you deliver up your brother or sister to save your own life? How will you stand? Make sure you pray and make sure that you have completely given your life to Yeshua HaMashiach and be a sold out disciple of his no matter what. Okay, that way you'll be ready and none of this will even come into question. You ought to be prepared. We cannot do this on our own strength, my fellow brothers and sisters. We need the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, who gives us strength in the words to speak. Luke chapter 12, verse 11 through 12. And when they bring you into the congregations and rulers and authorities, do not worry about how or what you shall answer or what you should say. For the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, shall teach you in that very hour what you should say. And we see this perfectly right here in Acts chapter 4, verse 7 through 12. And having placed them in the middle, they asked, by what power and what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit said to them, Rulers, and look at that. He was filled with the Holy Spirit before he even spoke. Just as Yeshua said that I just quoted from Luke. Rulers of the people and the elders of Israel, if today we are called into account for a good deed towards a sick man by whom he has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all of the people of Israel that in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth, whom you impaled, whom Yahweh raised from the dead, by him this one stands before you, healthy. This is the stone which was rejected by the builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. And there is no deliverance in anyone else. For there is no other name under the Shamaim, the heavens, given among men in which we need to be saved. Hallelujah. No matter how frightened you are during these times, my fellow brothers and sisters, our Father Yahweh, His Son Yeshua, does not lie. He gives us the strength to overcome this world. We just have to believe and stay strong. Okay. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb. And because of the word of their witness, and they did not love their lives to the death. Just as I pointed out from everybody here from the scripture. Hallelujah. I pray that this, is a, this has been a blessing to you. Please share this for everybody who needs to hear it. And as always, may our Father Yahweh bless you all in Yeshua HaMashiach's name. Amen.